Our, our, our scripture reading is from Genesis 22. And it says, Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will tell you. So, at this time, Gary is going to, that you might bless our study of your word, that we might see some parallels, but also about how it applies to us. And we ask, Father, for your blessing just now, in Jesus' name, amen. Verse 1 says, And now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, and he said, Here I am. I want to propose something to you. Each one of us is being tested also. We're tested every day but more specifically on certain things, that we will follow God no matter what. And he says, here I am. He said, I'm ready to do God's will, whatever that may be. Verse 2 says, and then he said, then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I tell, shall tell you. You that have children, and Cheryl was bringing this out this morning, she didn't really understand until she had her son, the love that you have for your own child. I want you to think about not only Abraham, but also God the Father this morning. The love that he has for each one of us. But also for his son that was willing to come and die in our place. Was this Abraham's only son? No. So he says only son. The scripture says only son here. Why does it say only if it wasn't his only? Because this was the promised one. Not the one naturally, but the promised one, the promised seed. And it's used in reference also to Jesus. I want you to see that prophecy because this whole chapter talks about the prophecy of Jesus. <coughs> we all know that human sacrifice was not something God wanted, yet he's asked to offer him up. And that was a pagan thing that they did in Canaan. We can't even imagine. But I want you to think of it in other terms, and that is Jesus was given as the sacrifice for each one of us. That's why this is the prophecy. Not only did it happen to Abraham, but it was a prophecy of Jesus and him coming for each one of us and being given. So this was the son of promise. God wanted him to be willing to do whatever. That's a challenge for each one of us. I want you to think about it for your own children. You know, that God asks us to sacrifice what we want, but what God wants for that child that we have. Are you hearing me? Verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. 
Why do you think he didn't say anything to Sarah? What's that? I, there was a little bit of op opposition. Do you think she would have gone along with it? What had he learned earlier? What had Abraham learned earlier about listening to Sarah? Trust God, Trust God and not human. I want you to hear this this morning. Trust God and not another human. Okay? Because he listened to her before, and that's how Ishmael came along. And then that caused a whole another series of problems. Okay? He doesn't talk to Sarah purposely. Because it says here, he arose early in the morning and straight off he's taken off. Okay? I want you to see that. Verse 4, and so on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw the place afar off. What does third day have to do with anything? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Resurrection. Now, I want you to think about something. For Abraham, that was the day of resurrection. In the same way with Jesus. Because he believed that God could raise his son from the dead, and that's why he went. Most people don't see some of these words in here, and I want you to look at it. Abraham counted his son as good as dead, so he knew that God would raise him somehow. He didn't know how, but he believed it. Verse 5, and Abraham said to the young man, stay here with the donkey and the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. The words coming back to you is a statement of faith. Notice the promise of coming back. I want you to think of something else too though. Jesus came back. Resurrection. And he's coming back for each one of us. Amen? And it won't be too soon as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. How does that correspond to Jesus's, Jesus' Jesus? and his, the cross, exactly, laid it on his back, okay? So it corresponds with the cross. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and the two of them went together, okay? Verse 7, but Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son, and again, he's saying this, I'm here, I'm focused on you. But he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Okay? Where's the lamb? He asked. Verse 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself or for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. Jesus provided for us. Amen? Isaac asked, where's the lamb? God will provide. Abraham believed somehow he would provide. He didn't know how. But God gave him a child in his old age and he could provide a lamb other than his son or he could resurrect his son. What faith that he had. But you all know that it took time to build that kind of faith and trust in God. 
It's a trust that most of us don't have yet, but God's trying to build us to that point. Verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told them, and Abraham built an altar there, placed the wood on the, on, in order, and then he bound his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. I want you to notice a couple things here. Abraham is 120 or so years old. His son is 20, somewhere between 18 and 20. Isaac could have easily overpowered his father, but he's willing to lay down his life. I want you to think of the scenes of Jesus just before he went to the cross because he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Again, leading to the prophecy of Jesus. The struggle could have been great. And you know Jesus didn't want to go to the cross, but he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That's the same way <coughs> Isaac does here. <coughs> That's why it's a direct prophecy of Jesus. Jesus willingly laid down his life when he went to the cross for us. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched out his hand, took the knife to slay his son. God the Father willingly let his son be the sacrifice for us. He allowed it. How he could watch it from heaven, I don't know. But he did because of his love for each one of us. That's love that we don't understand. He took that knife to slay his son. That gives us the idea of the gut-wrenching sacrifice Jesus was to his father. I don't think any of us could understand that. But I want you to think about something else. Each one of our children are a gift from God. But God still asks us to sacrifice them for his sake, understanding it's not what we want, but what he wants in their lives. That's a challenge for each one of us. To give up whoever, whatever, to sacrifice it for his honor and glory. Verse 11 says, The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, and so he said, Here I am. And in verse 12 he says, he says, do not lay a hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. You know, these words are used only, son, only twice. Here and when it's talking about Jesus. Now I know that you fear God. Now I know that you love me and you've not withheld your only son from me. Verse 13. And then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. What do you notice here? The thorns and... The male lamb, right? Jesus, the male lamb, and the thorns, and the thorns. How does that relate to the prophecy of Jesus? Crown of thorns. Crown of thorns. And what do the thorns represent? I don't want you to just think straight of the th 
thorns on his crown of thorns, what does it represent? The thorns represent how sin has pierced each one of us. Okay? The substitute was given. Jesus had a crown of thorns. And the thorns represent sin which pierced him to the point of death. 14. And Abraham called the place the Lord will provide as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it will be provided. Does God provide? Abundantly. More than we could ever think or ask, right? Abundantly he provides. 15 and 16. And it says, <clears throat> And then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven, and he said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Okay? Not withheld anything. 17 says, Blessings I will bless you, and multiply I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore. Your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Your seed will be a blessing to all. Your descendants as the stars of heaven and the sand on the seashore. In verse 18, in your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. What's the common theme here that he wants to bless us? Bless us when, what? Obeying. That's the challenge. When obeying. That's the challenge each one of us faces. Obeying to the point where he can bless us. And he blesses us even when we don't. Amen? Okay. And it says all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed. So we can be a blessing to others when we obey. Okay? And I don't know how you found it in your life, but I found it, you know, that God does bless you when you obey you're a blessing to others. You can be a blessing to others. And then verse 19, and I want to end there. And so Abraham returned to the young men, and they rose and they went together. They went together. God performed his miracle. So I want you to think of a couple things this morning. God put us here to be a blessing to others. If we obey, he will bless us like no one else. How many want to be blessed like no one else? Amen? Our challenge is to follow him and sacrifice all for him. Amen? How many want to give it all to him? Amen? we bow our heads for prayer loving father we thank you for your many blessings we ask that you would bless us this day and help us to draw closer to you for we ask it in jesus name amen